everyone welcome to our channel dex lab analytics my name is neharika rai and this is part 2 of linear regression in which i will explain you how you can practically solve a linear regression problem if you haven't subscribed my channel please go ahead and subscribe also click on the bell icon and if you haven't watched my previous videos of linear regression or any other topic related to statistics or python you can click on the i button on the top right hand side corner of your screen and you can watch them so without wasting any further time let's get started as we have discussed earlier uh, linear regression helps you find the trend in your data set it helps you predict the dependent variable on the basis of independent variable so uh, now let's see how we can practically calculate and predict our dependent value on the basis of independent values also how to calculate the coefficients of your data set so here i have a problem uh, which is basic uh, a, which i have also taken in my previous example that is um suppose that we have a column x that is income and we have a column y we have consumption here and um for that for each F, uh, x we have a y value so in case if uh, we have an x that is 10 what will be the value of y in that situation in our data so for that first of all we first we need to calculate the mean of the both the columns so here i have 9 ten uh, 9 12 6 10 9 10 7 8 uh, as and my x data and y in my y i have 69 76 52 56 7 57, 57 and so on and so forth my data is here now for that the mean value which is the summation of x for x column upon n that is number of observations is 9 for my y value for my y column the mean value will be summation of y upon n that is number of observations total of this equals to 63 and the reason why we have calculated this particular uh, these particular values that is mean of x and mean of y is because we are going we will be using that to calculate our coefficient so let's see the formula what uh, to calculate these coefficients that is beta 0 and beta 1 for uh, the formula for beta 1 is beta 1 equals to summation of x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar upon summation of x minus x bar square so in this case beta 1 is uh, our slope so we need to see how x variates with y divided by the variation of x in the data set so with the help of the variation we'll be able to understand the slope of our data set now for beta that is intercept the formula will be y bar minus beta 1 x bar so from where the the intercept says that from where the line is crossing the y axis what is the intercept of your data so in this case scenario y bar that is the mean of will be as we calculate the mean of uh, y minus the slope value multiplied by the x values so once that is removed always all there is left is the intercept value so beta 1 summation of x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar 
divided by summation of x minus x bar square this is going to give us the uh, movement of your data set and this will give you the intercept of your data set so as you can see that uh, these all values are needed to for calculation of beta zeros and beta ones so let's calculate them and create a a table simultaneously to create these values so the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the deviations deviations that is how much the value of x deviates from the mean value so x minus x bar y minus y bar so y minus y bar is how much my value of consumption deviates from the mean value how much less or greater the value is from the mean value so we have a column like so wherein we have the data variations or variances so you can see that 9 minus 9 equals to 0 here then 12 minus 3 equals to 3 then again 6 minus 9 equals to minus 3 10 minus 9 equals to 1 and so on and so forth so from the mean value the data is uh, the x values are deviating as 0 3 minus 3 1 0 1 minus 2 minus 1 3 minus 3 2 and minus 3 since the values since the values are slightly above slightly above or slightly below the mean values the summation of this column will result as 0 because mean is the representative of the entire data okay so here the, the summation of x minus x bar x minus x bar is 0 and y minus y bar is 0 so for y minus y bar 69 minus 63 is 6 76 minus 63 is 13 so all we are doing is we are trying to understand how much above or how much below the the uh, the data is original data or the value is from the mean in case of both both the x columns and the y columns now once we have done that we have calculated uh, we have found out the result and since we cannot s do the summation of both the columns what we can do is we can just square these values so that the minus sign are removed so let's do that now in our previous uh, sheet we've seen that uh, we have calculated the deviation now what we are going to do is all we are going to subtract these values uh, all we are going to do is we are going to square those values so here it's 0 9 9 it was minus uh, 3 and uh, 3 1 0 and so on and so forth and now we have the squared values if you remember in the uh, in the formula beta 0 sorry beta 1 equals to summation of x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar upon summation of x minus x bar ka square so we need this square value to uh, in the formula likewise we need the multiplication of x minus x bar and y minus y bar so we have also done the same and we have multiplied x minus x bar and y minus y bar from our previ previous slide and so the result is 0, 39, 33, minus 7, 0, 14, 10, 8, 12, 30, 
80 minus 1 and we have a total of 156 so we have calculated uh, this value as 156 and we have also done the summation of um, x minus x bar square for 48 so the end result here we can write it as 156 divided by 48 156 divided by 48 equals to um, 3.25 the values can be a little bit uh, up or a little bit down uh, depending upon the um, decimal points you are taking so that's that now we need to calculate the beta 0 values so beta 0 is y, uh, y bar minus beta 1 x bar so y bar is 63 then beta 1 is 3.25 multiplied by x bar was 9 so at the end we will by solving this uh, equation we will get a result of as 33.75 now we have the intercept that is the movement of the data how x variates with the uh, with y uh, upon the ratio of x that is independent variable and um, what is the intercept that is um, the mean value of y minus the slope values and uh, multiplied by the mean value of x the entire set is removed so that the 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 intercept is left with us and that is here so interce intercept is 33.75 now let's put this into our equation so the equation of linear regression is beta 0 plus beta 1 xi now putting these values the above values here we get predicted y intercept is 33.75 plus the uh, slope is 3.25 and then we have x size now what is this x i x i is nothing but the original value of x is that is um, in our case was 9 12 6 10 so each value of x will be multiplied by this value uh, this entire equation and then we'll be able to find out the predicted y let's go ahead and uh, do the same uh, do the same so here we have our y values sorry i meant here is here are your x values and here is your equation for the um, linear regression that is y expected y equals to beta 0 plus beta 1 multiplied by x1 so here 33.75 is your intercept and 3.25 is your slope multiplied by 9 that is the first value of x and uh, again we have 12 here so we are changing the each value we are using each value of x to predict the each value of y so we here we have 63 72.75 53.25 66.25 and so on and so forth so the each value is used to predict y values on the basis of the intercept and the slopes that we have just calculated now once we are done with that and then we have all the values for the predicted uh, all the predicted values of y we can again use um, say suppose that i have uh, a new x coming in 10 so for 10 x what will be the value of uh, consumption if we have to uh, if we ask then in that case we'll use this intercept that is 33.75 plus beta 1 that is 3.25 multiply it with the new value of x that is 10 
and the end result will be in this case will be 66.25 and then we'll see how much uh, uh, of a difference is making uh, bit uh, the making in the original data set and the data set where on the one we have predicted that is what is the difference between the observed value the original y and the expected y that is this value or the predicted y so that we get how much error we have made so likewise we are going to do the same and uh, we can use 10 20 30 x values uh, or whatever on this data to predict it, to predict our y values so let's check out the error which we have now got on the basis of um, these values predicted values so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to um, subtract the origin this value subtract the predicted value from the original y values or the observed y values to get the error or the residual term also known as white noise <coughs> so the formula is y minus predicted y so let's quickly do that So here I have my y values, original y values, that is consumption. Here I have my predicted values, which we have just predicted or calculated on the basis of the linear, regress, uh, linear regression equation. And uh, this is how we calculate the error, that is original y minus the predicted value. So 69 minus 63 is the 6, so that we have a difference of 6. Um, then 76 minus 72.75 is 3.25 so we have an error of 3.25 and uh, here we have negative value that is 56 minus 66.25 that means we have over predicted the value of y minus 10.25 is the error if you want you can just you can also uh, graphically represent the error values on the and the observed values or the um, movement of error. So suppose that we have a scale 0 to um, 20, let's say 15. And um, here we have the original y and the say predicted y and then we have 6 and this and this and so on and so forth so we can also create a graph on the basis of um, these errors and then see what is the shape of the errors we are getting okay once we have done that once we have this um, error what we can do is we can again to remove those uh, minus signs we can square these values we can square these values so that we remove these minus signs so let's do that again so this is my original error which we got and this is the squared form so 6 6 are 36 3.25 multiplied by 3.25 is giving me 10.56 and here I have 1.25 uh, here we have 1.26 and so on and uh, 56 and so on and so forth so the so we have squared these values now all we need to do is put into a formula to calculate the r square and the adjust, uh, adjusted r square now what is r square let's check that out r square the formula for the r square is 1 minus y i minus predicted y square upon summation of y i minus 
y bar square so as you can see in the formula uh, r square is nothing but a ratio of uh, the difference between the predicted value of y and the observed value of y upon the uh, upon the observed value of y and the mean value so it is nothing but the variation in uh, between the uh, predicted y and the uh, observed y and the variation within the data set that is from the mean how the data variates so it basically tells you is my uh, predicted y following the same variation of which my data is originally following or not if yes then uh, it will be um, the the result will move towards one if not then the result will move towards uh, move towards zero in in case it move towards it is zero that means that the the predictions are very much wrong and it is not fitting the original data so r square is also called goodness of fit goodness of fit because of the same reason because it needs to fit the variation uh, it's the predicted y needs to predict uh, fit the variations of the observed y's and um, in our case uh, let's let's quickly um, calculate the values put in the values and calculate the formula so um, summation of y i square let's check that out so in our previous table the y minus y bar square is uh, 894 and the the y minus y bar predicted y summation is 680 uh, 6.98 so let's let's quickly calculate that so 1 minus 386.98 upon 894 that was our y minus y bar summation square uh, the end result then would be 0. 0 0.5671 approximately it can be 1.2 point above or 1.2 point below depending upon the uh, decimals you have taken in calculation okay now uh, now let's quickly calculate the adjusted r square which is also written as a d j now adjusted r square is nothing but um, adjusted to the degree of freedom so that uh, the outliers are uh, the data is not compromised and the result is not compromised and because of any outlier we don't get um, any overfittings or something like that so the formula for the same will be 1 minus r square n minus 1 let's change the color of color of this pen first okay. n minus 1 upon here it will be minus 1 again sorry for my handwriting I know I have a little bit of bad hydrate, bad handwriting. Okay, I think that's not working. So this is the adjusted R square where K is the number of independent variables. In our case, we have only one that is X. So let's remove this first. R square A DJ one minus multiplied by N minus one upon N minus K minus one. Now it looks better. So let's do that. Now let's put in the value that is one minus uh, one minus R square. So R square is nothing but 
seven one multiplied by n minus 1 that is n is the number of observations the total number of observations of the rows are 12 minus 1 this will be 11 upon 12 minus 1 minus 1 now the end result of this particular calculation will be 0 0.5238 so this is the r square that is the uh, how much how much the predicted value has been able to explain or fit over the observed value based on the degree of freedom that is adjusted r square that's it so uh, in particular if i draw a graph again my observed values will be like this and my predicted values will be somewhat like this and the difference between them the predicted and the observed is the error The difference is called the error. These are the observed values. These are the predicted values. The the ones we have just calculated, and this is nothing but the trend line. So, in case if you do not believe that you have actually made the trend line uh, by calculating calculating these values, what you can do is you can go ahead, click on the Excel, and put in your data like this and just go ahead and draw a trend line using a pivot table or some uh, pivot table recommended charts or something like that and you will see that the line we have just created and the line which we the excel is creating are the same um, so eventually you will be able to cross validate what we have just learned so that's that so that's it for this video hope you liked it hope you understood uh, the basic concepts of um linear regression and how to calculate linear regression well um if you want to check out the calculations of these particular uh, example th this particular example which i have shown you you can just go ahead uh, in the description box there will be a link click on that and you'll be directed to the calculations and the blog for the same video um so if you like this video again please click on the like button please share it with your friends so that they can learn um, how to calculate this and um, click on the bell icon if you want to be uh, if you want to stay updated uh, if you want to know more about dex lab analytics more about me you can go ahead and um, go to the website www.dexlabanalytics.com or you can call on these numbers given on the screen you can whatsapp uh, whatsapp us on the numbers uh, which i provided here uh, also you can mail us at hello at the rate dexlabanalytics.com we are currently placed in gurga um, so bye bye have a great day ahead or Good night in case you're watching it at night. Bye bye.